Today marks a milestone in my weight loss. I hit the 20s, the 220s. I haven't been in the 220s probably since I was 30. Uh, actually, there was there was a period when I when I was almost 40, I think I got pretty small. But that's cuz I was spending all my money on beer instead of food because beer was more important than food and that'll lose that'll help you lose weight and even though you're consuming all the carbs you're not eating anything and i dropped quite a bit of weight i don't remember what year that was 2005 something like that eyes itch so there is a lot of useless junk on YouTube as well as a lot of helpful things on YouTube. Uh, useless junk, probably my channels, yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of good informative channels out there. There's, there's a lot of people that actually try to teach others things. A lot of it falls on deaf ears. A lot of it doesn't get watched. But there are a lot of good channels if you choose to watch them. One of the channels I watch, amongst several, uh, is a, there's a series of doctors that are on YouTube that uh, they, they've, they've jumped the line. Okay, they don't want, they want you to know the medical profession is all a staged, uh, it's, it's all run by the pharmaceutical companies. They know this. They have taken the, they have made the effort to do research on their own and to give you the information as they see it, not as an association sees it. Did I say that right? Association. Association. Why is that word hard to say? I never had trouble saying that word before. Mm. For instance, Dr. Eric Berg. Now, he's not really a carnivore activist or any of that. Uh, he has a lot of vitamin videos telling you which vitamins you need, which kinds of vitamins you should take. And I had learned something really informative that I'll pass on to you. And then you can go check out his channel, Dr. Eric Berg. I don't have any association with him. It's just something I watched. So the, the, some of the vitamins I take, especially now that I've been on carnivore, a lot of these I've been taking for years anyway. I take vitamin D, vitamin C. Uh, I was taking B12, but I'm getting a lot of that from the meat. So I'm not really taking that. Uh, I'm taking magnesium and zinc. Don't really need the zinc because that's in the meat and all that. But magnesium is important if you have a vitamin D deficiency like I do or did. I don't know yet, but I did have one. And without magnesium, the vitamin D will not work. Will not work is good. It's not as effective. So you could be popping all the vitamin D you want and still have a deficiency. Uh, and the way he describes it, I'm not a doctor by far. Uh, he, he can describe it better in his videos. But I did learn something. There are four different kinds of magnesium. And the one you're going to see the most often on, on the store shelves is this just says magnesium. But it has, if you look on the back of any vitamin, it'll say the ingredients, it'll say magnesium, 500 milligrams. We put that up to the camera. And then right underneath it, it'll say as magnesium oxide. The oxide doesn't do a thing. Hardly any of the magnesium oxide adheres to your blood cells, whatever cells it does. It goes, you know, your kidneys ain't got much use for it. Very little of this pill gets used. 
And he has a video where he was going through each of the magnesiums and telling you how much of that gets absorbed in your body, how much of it doesn't. And this one, not very good. The one he suggested is magnesium glycinate. Is that how you say that? Glycinate. 40, I think a good 40 to 60% of this will stick to your innards. This is the one you need to be taking, uh, especially on carnivore or whatever. But it does say veggie capsule. So am I not carnivore now? I don't know. So I started, I ordered these. I couldn't find these anywhere, the dollar store or Walmart. I could not find these. They may have them, but I didn't find them. So I ordered them off Amazon. The next day I had them and started taking them. Now these even look different. These come in a capsule with powder inside. And these are big horse pills that I'd have to break in half to swallow. I know why they make them that big, you know, with the vitamin C and this, I'd be about choked to death. So I have switched to that. Have I noticed the difference? Yes. And I don't know if it's because of this. I don't know if it's because of the stage of where I'm at with my weight loss. I don't know. But I have noticed the difference. And I've been taking these a couple of weeks now. I just take one in the morning or after I eat my breakfast with the rest of my stuff. So he has other videos I still need to watch. Uh, I want to watch, you know, one about vitamin, what's the best kind of vitamin C. They confuse us. Okay. I mean, when I heard you should take magnesium, I went and got magnesium. I didn't know there was 85 different kinds of it and that they would work in different ways, but they do. So today's world, we, we have to educate ourselves the best we can. And YouTube, you know, is an encyclopedia of knowledge. And sometimes it just, you may, you know, like what I'm doing here, I, I have no knowledge of any of this, but I saw a video and now I'm relaying that to you. So you can go watch that video and you could get educated. So you don't necessarily have to have the education to get to people. You just have to steer them in the right direction. And that's all I'm trying to do. Um, I have people that watch my channel that have no interest in weight loss. They have no interest in a lot of the things I do, but they still watch. So I try to vary my subjects in these podcasts to please everybody, but you know, you can't please everybody all the time. You can only please a few people a little bit of the time. But I try. And that goes with, uh, I, I think, the movement of human beings to live in major cities have done no good for society. Uh, it has created so many things that I stand against uh, fashion. You got guys walking around now with purses. I can't believe my... I watch this channel where the guy walks around with a walker and he dresses up like an old man and he farts on people. And I enjoy that channel. And he's in L.A. And I'm like shaking my head when I see these dudes. They got purses. They wear the same clothes as the buddy next to them. They're so clonish. You know? Men don't need to be fashion. We don't need to worry about fashion. We need to just put on some jeans, put on a t-shirt, and go about your day. And things would be a lot better. You don't need a $5,000 Gucci t-shirt. You don't. But if that's the life you choose, then that's the life that you should have. Because it's a free country. <laughs> it used to be. It used to be. Not so much anymore. But you are allowed to wear what you want to wear. And if you like wearing skinny jeans and a man bun and a purse, by all means, you can wear it. I don't hate you for it. 
I'm just not going to wear it. That's all I'm saying. Get a drink of this coffee. <clears throat> I know they call them man bags, but still, they're a purse. It is a purse. And they wear them around their chest and they got them like this. And I'm like, oh, what? And then backpacks, man, I don't get it. I understand nowadays kids wear backpacks to school to carry their books and their school supplies. I get that. I understand that. We didn't do that as a kid. We didn't. You carried your book like a man. You know, you had your stack of books down there like that. Then you went to school and you got in your locker and you shoved them all in there and you grabbed what you need and then you didn't have no backpack. Okay. Why does a human being require so many things today? And then on this fart video, if they don't have a man bag, they're wearing backpacks. Grown men walking down with backpacks in the city environment. How much stuff do you require to carry? Okay, if it don't fit in my wallet, I don't need it. That's how I was raised. That's how the, the culture I grew up in. I mean, I don't need hairbrushes. I don't need oils and scents and colognes. and th I don't need to carry that with me. Uh, colognes. I quit wearing colognes years ago. Years ago. And actually, I can't. There's one, I don't know, see, I jumped off on a tangent. I'm off on another tangent, but that's, hey, if I am in a grocery store or any enclosed area with other human beings, an office setting, and somebody is wearing perfume or cologne, and it's heavy, I begin to sneeze, and I do not stop. I am allergic big time to scented it's mostly colognes and perfumes. I remember back in my bar days, I'd get in these crowded nightclubs and go mingling through the club, you know, and you'd pass somebody that stunk so bad because they took a bath in their cologne, and I would just go. I would have to go outside until I quit sneezing, and then it just seems once it was triggered, it never stopped. So I can't be around people with fake smells. Uh, that's what I call fake smells. Now, there's some that smells good, and there's a way to do it, and there's a way not to do it. Uh, I am not attracted to any woman that just sprays perfume on, like they're taking a bath in it. And you've, you've been around them people. There's one in every crowd that doused herself in that, and it makes it uncomfortable for everyone around you. Uh, all you need is, you know, that's it. One squirt, wherever you want to put it. Just knock the mic. Okay. How many tangents have I went off on already? I don't know. I'd probably better get off here. I got work to do. I got to go finish filming something. I got to go to the grocery store because I'm out of unsweet tea. That is a staple in this house. I wouldn't call it a staple. It doesn't do anything. But I like to put my electrolytes in that and then put a little lemon juice in there. <clears throat> That's good coffee. All right. Well, hey, Tuesday, Dogtober starts. And I'm looking for all you guys to watch. Give me some comments. If, you, if you're not watching from a TV or you have the ability to comment, please leave me a comment some reason, that stupid Alpo rhythm picks up on that. Oh, what happened yesterday? Yes, I was out. One more thing. I was out in the shop, and the dogs start barking, going nuts. If somebody pulls in my driveway, I know about it. If I'm home and somebody pulls in my driveway, starts coming up my hill, they make sure I know. So a car pulls in. It's, it's an older couple. And the gentleman gets out and he says, uh, I heard you do dog rescue. <laughs> and this ain't the first time this has happened. It happened. Somebody in town is saying, go see him. 
He'll help you. Well, apparently they have a neighbor that had four dogs, Millie, Millie type dogs, Walker hounds, show up and didn't know what to do. He was threatening to shoot them. The older man was uh, not the one that pulled in, the one they're telling me about. He didn't know what else to do. So I put them in touch with the rescue. Now it's up to them to get pictures and then we'll see what happens from there. But this is a a very common thing around here. Very common. Uh, it's just a lot of irresponsible people with dogs. They, you know, and the biggest problem is that they don't spay and neuter. So the dog runs off. Guess what happens? They pat, team up with another dog. Next thing you know, you got a dozen dogs because, you know, they just do what dogs do naturally, and it's not the dog's fault. They're just trying to survive. They do what they do by instinct. So hopefully the rescue will help them out. I'll be following that story, and if possible, uh, maybe go to the – they don't have a facility. What they do have is a bunch of fosters. And if everybody that had a, uh, a dog issue had – would bring them dogs or contacted them. They just, they can't handle all that. You, you, you can't save them all. The funds aren't there. People only care when it involves them. In other words, people that don't usually donate to a dog rescue, they don't donate. But if somebody, if a dog rescue was to help them out with something, they may give a donation, but they're not giving it any other time. And that's what these places need. And that's what I'm going to try to, you know, emphasize on next month in my videos is that they need constant support. If you can forego a cup of coffee three times a week and donate a few dollars to a animal rescue, you're not going to die because you don't have that coffee, but they could use that money. And it's a constant battle raising funds. And that's all I'm trying to do is raise awareness. You know, it doesn't hurt to do that. So, thanks for watching, folks. We will see you tomorrow. Happy trails.